All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Welcome to The Water Cooler. The Water Cooler is a show about marketing, sales, and technology. Each episode, we focus on bringing you advice that works. So this is one of the, our, our favorite types of shows to do, Chris. We, mm -hmm. type, we like to you know scan the web to find ideas and strategies and techniques and tactics that help our community, our audience, our fans really execute creative ideas that work. So today's show, we're bringing you seven advanced real estate marketing ideas. And the hope is, is that throughout today's show, we're gonna not only give you examples of these ideas, but then mm -hmm. also give you some of the underlying principle, principles behind why these ideas work so well. And I think that that part really matters, Chris, teaching people not only you know what to do, but also getting the, getting the why behind it. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and set the stage for us, Chris, in terms of maybe just giving a little bit of a taste of, you know, what we're going to be covering today. Yeah. Well, the thing is that right now it is harder to stand out than ever before, right? The mm -hmm. innovation has leveled up a bit. As an example, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a window, right? There's a window through which you can be an early adopter. You can be ahead of the curve. So mm -hmm. if you were super early on Zillow or super early on Facebook or super early on Twitter or super early, uh, you know, with video, right? Mm -hmm. There, there's sort of two ways to be innovative. There's being early, mm -hmm. which a couple of the examples are just like first mover adopter, yep. right? Just like first mover advantage. But then there's also just like, so much of what happens on all of the social networks through all the marketing that we see is very average, Jimmy. Mm. Average is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Excellence is rare. And so when, when, what I think is true about you and I, and I think a lot of the people that watch this show, listen to the show, you know, greatness when you see it, like it, it literally takes that long to recognize like that was fucking smart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just know it. And so with the ideas that we're going to showcase today, it, they, they sort of had those epiphany type moments where it's just like, man, that was clever. That was smart. Like, to be clear, this industry is all about parody. And sometimes that's okay. In fact, tip number seven, mm -hmm. one of my favorite tips that I brought to the table. Tip number seven is basically like, copy greatness here's how yeah so it isn't that you shouldn't emulate and look up to and mimic and and sort of be inspired by greatness you should but what i love about a lot of the ideas today is these are the genesis of the great idea mm -hmm. these are the innovators mm -hmm. these are the people that had the idea now some of these are our ideas some of these are our clients not all of them are mm -hmm. not all of them are curator clients not all of them are curator ideas it's just, like I said, when you see something excellent, you look at it twice, you take notes, you write it down, you jot it down. And so I think people are going to love these seven ideas. Well, I really do. You know, it's really, the first one. Well, just to react one thing you said there, I think yeah. it's really important. You Please. talked about the, this idea of early adopters. Mm -hmm. what's what's what i seen to you know um our, our good friend and 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 one time host uh melanie pache uh who mm -hmm. uh runs the the, the melanie and brell uh, the mel and brell team or the brell team excuse me uh she had she had this uh question in her toronto uh mastermind group of real estate agents mm -hmm. and it was basically about like what is the future of tiktok advertising and we're talking about tiktok in the moment and mm -hmm. what you saw is all these people saying all these other platforms are are going down by the wayside and and tiktok's emerging as the primary Plat advertising platform and what's mm -hmm. what's really interesting and they're pointing to examples like oh you know i i got a deal on tiktok or I, i'm getting you know great views on tiktok and what's really interesting is like you can make up massive gains if you're an early adopter like look at mm -hmm. raj look at lucky to live here right they're making sort of like strides to become an early adopter so mm -hmm. if you're an early adopter you don't necessarily need to be super strategic or really great you benefit from basically just being amongst a few people that are on the platform. But mm -hmm. as a platform matures, the requirement to be excellent, as you said earlier, increases significantly. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you really want to get results from Facebook, you got to know what you're doing. If you want to yeah. get results from blogging, you got to know what you're doing. So it, sure. it's a, sort of an interesting juxtaposition, Chris, which is you can be kind of like reckless and loose as an early adopter and still win mm -hmm. in a new platform. You can't do that in an established platform. Yeah. And we have a little bit of each. Mm -hmm. So let me set you up for the first one, Jimmy, because sure. you know, what I would, what I would kind of coin this as is like Buzzfeed, you know, 
BuzzFeed, I think, really pioneered the concept of listicles. Yeah. You know, s seven, seven ways to do X, eight things that prove you're the most like this friend's character, right? Like, they're like listicles. But here's what's fascinating about listicles they work. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be resistant to them, but you're probably like also clicking on them. And I think it just sets the expectation with the consumer. Like if I click and read this, I'm going to see eight things that are X or yeah. nine ways to do Y. And so the first thing that you're going to show is this concept of using curated listing categories, let's call it, mm -hmm. combined with smart social advertising yeah. to drive massive traffic and results. So walk us through the first one. We're going to do some screen share today. Sure. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast later, head to the YouTube channel if you want the visuals. Yep. So we'll share the screen right now and pull it up. So mm -hmm. let, let me ask you a question, Chris. Do Please. consumers want more options or less? That's an interesting question. There's a right answer. I think they want... I think I think it depends. Like Cheesecake Factory is popular, <laughs> and they got a lot of options. Okay, uh, but I I think overall we would rather have less great options served up to us on a platter. And and that and that's a it's a great study done by I think Barry Schwartz talks about this the paradox of choice. You gave mm -hmm. a perfect example. We think we want the cheesecake menu, but what we really want is someone to tell us what we should pay attention to. We want less options. We feel mm -hmm. less anxious. We feel less uh, confused. We feel more confident when we have fewer options. So I think the principle behind this is actually a principle in psychology mm -hmm. is this idea of serving up recommendations. You know, there's a great quote from the guy from uh, Wired Magazine. He said, we move, we're moving from the age of information into the age mm -hmm. of recommendations. Mm -hmm. So what Jordan Rossman did, this is a two-step process. Okay. So Jordan Rossman ran this campaign, and I'm pulling up his blog right now. I'm on his website. It's a beautiful website, rossmanteam.com. When I go to his blog, I'm going to pull up an example of an article. Now, just to set the stage here, he generated over $33,000 in GCI from this one blog post. This okay. one blog post generated over a thousand visitors when he promoted it in a single day. So mm -hmm. from a, not only from a traffic perspective, which is the metrics we care about, Chris, like, you know, uh, how many hits did he get? How many page views? But then also mm -hmm. from a bottom line, like profit standpoint, this blog post convert. And to your point, it's exactly mm -hmm. what he did. He found, and I'll pull the article here. It's beautiful homes in Aurelia that are socially distance, distant safe. And mm -hmm. now the timing of this really mattered because he did it right around April, uh, April of this past year. So it was, you know, mm -hmm. a hot topic. But what he did is he curated a list of uh, this was new construction homes where there mm -hmm. were actually they were actually vacant. No one was living in the property. So right. therefore, there wasn't a consumer there that had to put a mask on that had to like, you know, leave the house. It was a vacant property. So you could, mm -hmm. as a consumer, go see the property. Now you can do that or you can show, you know, the idea could be, Chris, like homes with a 3D tour. But what he's doing is he's building a list of properties or recommendations for serious buyers and sellers who want to, you know, preview that property. So the step one is figure out a niche in your market that mm -hmm. is highly desirable. Meaning yep. like, all you have to do, Chris, is ask yourself a simple question. What is the subset of the market or segment of the market that when a home hits in that price range, it sells mm -hmm. within seven days? Mm -hmm. And now let me just kind of expand that a bit and kind of put together a list of homes like that. Yeah. Well, I think it could be the price. I also think it could be the amenity. Mm, yep. Because I think about right now, lots of square footage, mm -hmm. right? Like homes for sale with more than 3,000 square feet. I think about a, a, a desired amenity like a home office. Yeah. You know, I think about people wanting more outdoor space. These are all things that are proven. Like you look at the Redfin data, the Compass data, Yeah. you know, people are looking for those types of features. So, you know, the MLS is pretty big. There's a lot of listings. Zillow's got a lot of listings. So you're right. If you, if you think of yourself as a curator, mm -hmm. no pun intended, you say, you know what? There's 3,200 homes for sale right now in the MLS. I found seven that fit this description. And you're right. The people 
that do the work, the real estate agents on the ground, they know what those desired amenities are. They know what the thing somebody keeps asking about mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And it could, it could be, uh, we had an article that we created for a client or she may have done this one years ago, seven homes for sale right now mm -hmm. with a pool for under $450,000. Mm -hmm. And this was out in California. So to find a home with a pool for under 450, it was like, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And it, it got over 700 leads from one ad. Yeah. You know, this one was, was sort of the same. So step one is you create this curated list and you're right, homes with 3D tours, homes with home offices, homes with huge backyards, mm -hmm. homes with, uh, you know, more than X amount of square footage. Yeah. The, the relevancy and the timeliness of this can't be overlooked. Absolutely. And the three things you mentioned there was price, amenities, and location. So those are the three mm -hmm. variables you can experiment with. 13 homes under $500,000 in this neighborhood with this amenity. And mm -hmm. so you, so when you think about the market in which you serve, you know, this is an example of how do you create content consistently, Chris, every mm -hmm. single week? Well, this is one of those sort of like works every time techniques that you can leverage. Now, the second part of the strategy mm -hmm. is to run an ad campaign behind it. Mm -hmm. Now we have a technology curator called Curator Brain. So I'm pulling up examples of other curator clients who did the exact same thing. And I'm looking at yeah. what Sam Park did here. And so Sam Park took the same, he heard about the story of Jordan Rossman and he took the exact same concept and he applied it to Chino Hills. And mm -hmm. you can see he put a $250 budget behind this campaign. But if you look at the impressions of the campaign, 33,000, that's impressive. If you look at the actual like, mm -hmm. you know, likes, sorry, 13 likes, not that great. But if you look at the website clicks, Mm -hmm. 1,162 clicks from this campaign, which Beautiful. is essentially a co you know, cost per click of you know, less than about 10, 12 cents. Mm -hmm. you know, th this is like circa 2010 marketing, Chris, when you can mm -hmm. get 10 cents or 5 cents a click on the internet. So you can't just create the post, Chris. You can't just curate all this data unless you're willing to put a budget behind it. And, yeah. and, and I think this is a two-step process, but for those of you who are listening right now who know that you should be blogging more and want to get your name out there more actively, mm -hmm. and, you, and you don't have the capacity, time, or resources to write thought leadership pieces, mm -hmm. this is a low-hanging fruit, works every time, and can help establish you as a local expert in the area you serve. Well, let me add one other caveat. What this also does is, like, how often do we hear, like, I don't have a listing. I don't have listings. Like Great people point. don't have listings right now, but you do have listings because you have IDX and you have broker reciprocity and you have these listings on your website. And on your website, it says listing featured courtesy of, yeah. right? Like X brokerage. Chris, like, if, if you're going to put the person's name in the ad who has a listing, do it. Who cares? Yeah. Like, like consumers are just, they're not going to read it. Like if you got a, mm -hmm. from a disclaimer perspective or a compliance perspective, like these homes are listed by these agencies, like go ahead, do it. Like, don't, yeah. don't overthink that. Uh, no, it's a great point. If you don't have listings, you can incorporate that into the campaign. All right, so let's keep it rolling, Chris. We got a strategy for blogging and advertising on Facebook, something that works every time. The second category mm -hmm. is something I actually think is a, is a, is a great idea, which is this concept yeah. of leveraging other people's content. Mm -hmm. Talk about user-generated content for me. Yeah, this is actually, you know, some of the best brands in the world that have scale, they do this all the time. So Peloton, everybody takes pictures of themselves bragging about their Peloton. Mm -hmm. Peloton finds that content, shares that. Think about the TikTok that went viral with Dogface, with the Ocean Spray, yeah. you know, Cranberry with the Fleetwood Mac song, right? And then everybody else started like, copying his video mm -hmm. and then TikTok said, okay, we're going to take all those videos and mm -hmm. we're going to put those into a commercial that we run during the NBA finals. Mm -hmm. So what's, what I think a lot of people don't know about social media is that when, when things are shared on most social networks, yeah, they become fair game for you to then share. Mm-hmm. And you can actually take content from other places and you can embed that content on your website and you can drive traffic back to you thanks to them. Mm -hmm. So this example is actually from the Alex and Joe team. The five most Instagrammable places in South Florida. Mm -hmm. This is highly clickable, does great in email, does great in an ad campaign. But just to be clear, these are not actual photos that Alex and Joe had to go out and take. I don't yeah. know what the accounts say there, Jimmy. 
Like who actually took the photos? Yeah, they're all different firms. My, uh, all different accounts. Miami Design District, mm -hmm. uh, the Wynwood uh, Wall Official. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, I don't even know how you pronounce this one, Chris. Faina? Faina, Miami yeah. Beach. Right? They're beautiful, though. They are beautiful. And so, like, if you click through on one of those, actually click on one of the uh, posts. Mm -hmm. What people can do is when, when you go into Instagram, now this is a little bit of a, a hack. It's a little bit of a pro tip because... The truth is, Jimmy, people 99.9% .9 of the time don't go to Instagram on desktop. Mm -hmm. But to do this, you have to go to Instagram on desktop, click on the three dots to the right of the post, mm -hmm. and then click on embed, right? Boom. So you can then copy that, mm -hmm. and then you can embed that into your website. Now, the reality is, and we're actually working on an article like, uh, you know, X amount of tweets about Zillow that real estate agents will love. Mm -hmm. We're doing one with memes. You can do this with YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. You can do this with Instagram posts. You can do this with uh, tweets. Yeah. You can do this with Facebook posts. Like the, the content that gets put out there onto the web that's embeddable into other places, I think it's a smart play. You know, if you were to say the five best burgers in Boston, mm -hmm. like you don't think that the best burger restaurants in Boston don't have Instagram accounts mm -hmm. with their freaking burgers looking amazing. And they love this, the fact that you're sharing it. Well, that's the other thing here is that you can then go DM these pages, go message the people and say, hey, we actually featured one of your photos in our article of the best Instagrammable places in South Florida. Yeah. And that gives you a really like, Jimmy, listen, we get featured sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Humble brag. When someone reaches out and says, Hey, Chris, uh, you're, we actually used your account. Uh, you made the list of the most influential real estate professionals on Instagram. You don't think I'm going to tweet that, <laughs> share that, yeah. Facebook that? Yeah. Like, absolutely. So step one, embed. Yeah. Beautiful content. Step two, go tell the people you featured and they'll probably share it more. But this is highly clickable. Yeah. Uh, we actually have seen the most Instagrammable places in Chicago, the most Instagrammable places in the United States. The most, if you have like a smaller like city, we actually ran into this mm -hmm. where like, there aren't five Instagrammable places <laughs> in my town. Go to the state level, right? The yeah. most Instagrammable places in Rhode Island, whatever you have to do. Sure. But it's good stuff. Great article, beautiful, visually appealing. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the most successful magazines are doing it. Yeah, I love it. And I think b both these ideas, you know, we, we, we preach the importance of creating original content to help you build mm -hmm. your brand and attract customers. Both of these ideas are you creating original content, but you're, you're, you're basically starting in the red zone. You're starting with your listings or you're starting with contents already created that you're basically assembling in a unique way. And I think that's 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 hopefully the the, the takeaway here. All right, what do we yeah. have next, Chris? Yeah, so idea number three uh, is something that you call, I don't call it this, you call it this. You call it life cycle marketing. You mm -hmm. love that term. <laughs> life cycle yeah. marketing. Yeah. But it, it is a relevant tactic and it's something that not enough people do. I think... If I look at the history of real estate, Jimmy, yeah. there's there's two life cycles, right? Just listed, just sold, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe open house, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I don't think people really tap into the true potential of sort of bringing people on the journey with you yeah. of the process of taking the listing, advertising the listing, selling the listing. So talk about marketing your marketing, life cycle marketing, advanced tip number three. You know, the, uh, one of Tom Ferry's coaches, and his name's going to escape me, some, maybe someone can help me in the chat. Uh, he's one of, our, one of his popular coaches and speakers. He talked about this idea. He said, he has a great tweet where he said, don't list a property, launch a property. And mm -hmm. I thought, what a great way to phrase it, because that's exactly what you want to do. So Chris, when is the best time to promote a movie? Yeah. Well, by the way, I think it, it was Jason Pantana. Thank you. Yes. Jason Pantana. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Props to him. He puts out good content. Um, the best time to promote 
and advertise a movie is definitely before it comes out. Before before the haters start hating, right? Like before the, yeah. before, before the, the rotten tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, out. before people like me who wait to see what everyone else thinks go on a rotten tomato and like look at the scores. So so you know this idea of Anybody in marketing and advertising understands that, you know, when you are trying to build excitement and energy around an event and mm -hmm. a listing is an event, it's a product launch. It's a new thing that people can buy. And we need to think about listings as a product is mm -hmm. to build up the momentum and excitement. So when we talk about life cycle marketing, what we're mm -hmm. talking about is that every point of the listing life cycle is an opportunity for you to actually promote the property. So I have an example here for you just for context. And so, you know, whether you're setting the appointment, right? If you set the, and this is going to be, I know some of you have to deal with compliance with your MLS around, you know, being able to promote a property within 24 hours before it hits the MLS and all that. But just, just work with me here. Mm -hmm. If you set an appointment, you can send an email out. Hey, listen, I'm going on a listing appointment. I can't talk about it, where it's at, who it's with, when it's hitting the market or if it's in the market. But mm -hmm. if you want to be amongst the first people to know about this listing, if it hits the market, reply to this email. Yeah. Now I ain't promoting anything, Chris, except mm -hmm. an idea. Right. This is that that like 10 second teaser where the trailer just shows you like one scene. Yeah. And so you can you can do stuff like you can get super creative here, get some excitement. Get, you want to be the arbiter of information when you're in marketing, especially in the real estate space. But before the property actually hits the market uh, or before you or when you can actually promote the property, you can start to promote like the idea and actually uh, to your database in a way where you get people to like opt in. And I have an example here for you. This is a campaign that uh, Bob Mayako, hopefully Bob, I got the last name right. Bob Mayako, mm -hmm. our guy, Bob, who, by the way, check out Bob's website, check out Bob's videos. Uh, we love Bob here, curator. The guy is just an absolute A plus dude. And he just puts out some great content, but he sent this email. I said, in the next 24 hours, I have a home located in the heart of Hawaiian evergreen that's coming on the market. And I wanted you to hear about it first. Mm -hmm. I, and this is the, this is the really important line here, Chris. I predict that this home will sell within a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like building that scarcity and that excitement. Chris, there's only 100 tickets available. Do you want one? They're going to sell out. Well, right? right now it might be, I predict it will sell within a few <laughs> hours or a few days. Right. And, and so, so you get that excitement, you get that scarcity. Would you like me to send you the details and the photos? Let me know ASAP. And then he adds the last line here. One more thing. I'm going to list the property to the public tomorrow. So you're, you're the first to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that creates what uh, Robert Cialdini says. It creates this sort of law of reciprocity. It gets people to feel like, oh, you're giving me something, so I want to give you something back. And mm -hmm. this response that he gets from Laura, he says, I would love more information about the home in Hawaii. My husband and I live in Hawaii, and my parents are looking for a home in Evergreen. Brilliant. Now, now what's, well, pay attention, Chris, to, to sort of language here. He said, are you interested in this home for yourself? Mm -hmm. They may not reply. But like, are, would you like me to send you information about the home? Now, like, oh, well, who do I know in my network? That I can mm -hmm. send this, and you look at that. Look at the um, look at the subject line here, Chris. Mm -hmm. Not would you like to see more information? It's who do you know? Yep. Who would love this home? Mm -hmm. So the first stage of life cycle marketing and the first stage of launching a listing is to promote the property the right way before it's the market. Mm -hmm. But you have another example, which is once the property is sold, yeah, within a few days, right above asking price, yeah. What do you do? Well. You definitely, this is something I think a lot of real estate agents fall short on is sort of like marketing their marketing. Mm -hmm. So like I, I got an email from Connie Carlson recently and it said, we sold this home in 25 hours and 38 minutes. Here's how. Mm -hmm. There was another one like how we got 23,475 views of this listing on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how our latest listing reached 39,274 people on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like that sort of specificity of the results of the marketing that you did for a home yeah. is really interesting to people. It's, it's a different way to say just sold, Yeah. right? Now we have a client uh, and they are doing a great job on TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, lucky to live here. If you guys want to follow an account on TikTok, that's actually doing a great job. Lucky to live here uh, is doing a great job on TikTok. Does TikTok even have desktop? Yeah, they do. Perfect. Dude, you know I'm, you know I'm Mr. Desktop. Okay. Yeah. 
There it is. Yeah. There are, yeah. Um, so Ashley, who's been, you know, their director of marketing for a while, she's just doing a really great job, but mm -hmm. they actually put a listing, beautiful listing mm -hmm. on TikTok and they, they sold it. Like they got the lead and they sold the property from TikTok. So this is them basically saying, Hey, we sold this home on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And you can see the response. You can see the likes. You can see the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a TikTok video, obviously, that they did of the home. Mm -hmm. But then what's interesting is like, this is back to our point of like, sometimes as long as you're first, yeah. you're going to win. Like this video and this sold from TikTok got press. Yeah, You, you can pull up the article. I think it was newday.com. Basically, you know, reporters are looking for things like this, mm -hmm. right? Because it's the cool new thing. So uh, in our doc here, if it'll open up for you, you can actually see that like this Long Island home sold mm -hmm. on TikTok, uh, which was above asking price, Yeah, by the way. So they got, you know, number one, they created the content on TikTok that helped sell it for above asking price. Number two, they went to their other social networks where they probably have a bigger following and they have a lot of their sphere and their past clients are probably not even on TikTok, right? Yeah. And they said, hey, we sold this home on TikTok. And then I don't know if they reached out to the media or if the media reached out to them, but clearly they got publicity mm -hmm. about selling the property on TikTok. So you know, this is an interesting take on just sold, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, be specific, like how, and this is something I think everybody has to do a better job of, which is like, how'd you find out about us? Mm -hmm. How exactly did you find out about this property? Oh, we saw it in a TikTok video. Yeah. Boom. Connect those dots, turn that into a campaign. Yeah. So it's good stuff. I love it. I like what Bob's doing through email. I like what lucky to live here did through TikTok. And, and I, I love the example of this is a modern day version of just sold. Mm -hmm. You know, marketing is all about standing out and differentiating yourself amongst amongst competition. But notably, they sold the property on TikTok and they ran a Facebook campaign. Yeah. Right. And, and, and look and, at the results of the campaign. Which it, it, And this is something that, you know, you've taught me many, many years ago, this importance of cross pollinating. Mm -hmm. You know, you would use something that you used to do in the, in the tech savvy days that I always admired was you would use your email list to build your social following and you'd use mm -hmm. your social following to build your email list. That's when mm -hmm. it was kind of easy. It was kind of like Facebook and Twitter and email, right? Now it's become a little bit more complicated, a little bit more diverse. You have to kind of be everywhere all the time. But this idea of when you have a successful campaign on one channel, cross promoting that across another channel is a really smart tactic. So I love this idea, market your marketing. At the end of the day, your listings are your best asset. You gotta think about creative ways to drive as much traffic, get as many leads, and of course, get the best results for your clients out of every single sale. All mm -hmm. right, Chris, let me set you up for the next one here. Um, let's take it a little bit more on the, we talked about listings and user-generated content. I want to take it locally here for a second and talk mm -hmm. specifically about, you know, agents are the ambassadors of their local community. It's one of the things that we had Brian Barrera on not too long ago. He talked about how agents really are safe from these large corporations because they are sort of the stewards of their neighborhoods. So this is an example of a campaign that only a local agent could execute. Walk us through this idea. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is I know a lot of the people watching, you know, they love to do like client appreciation parties. Mm -hmm. They love to have like, hey, let's rent out the bowling alley. Let's rent out the movie theater. Let's rent out the pumpkin patch. And because of COVID, that has become a non-option. Yeah. Like, let's be clear. Like you're, you're not having some big client appreciation party right now. So what our client Rian and Ferrari did, which I loved, and I, the reason I loved it was twofold. Number one, there's a very human element to this. Like we are living through a moment in time, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. COVID is a, is a moment in time that will pass, that will be in the history books forever. It will be, you know, solderized into our mind. Like we're never going to forget this. And so what Rian did, which I thought was brilliant, is she actually hired a photographer to go to a bunch of her past clients and sphere of influences homes and actually take pictures of them, mm -hmm. professional pictures, socially distant, safe pictures. And she did it to provide to them. And then she showcased it in an album. And if you click through some of these, Jimmy, they're really funny. 
but you know, you see the guy with the, <laughs> like the coat on up top and the yeah. shorts on, on the bottom. Um, the kids are dressed up, mm -hmm. but th they're just beautiful photos. Stay home 2020, mm -hmm. uh, couples, families, um, Dogs. it's just really good stuff. Mm -hmm. The dog, right. The billboard, um, the first the responders, front, yeah. first responder. I love that. They got the masks on, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you, if you go back and you kind of look at, uh, I love that when the guy's working from home, the mom's teaching from home, you know, <laughs> like it, it, it's very human. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the response to this, yeah, you know, the likes, the comments, like what the community said, the people that were involved in it and, you know, no offense to photographers, they're not that expensive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost that much money. Yeah. And like. This is something that's like so meaningful to people. Like, first of all, no one thought of doing this on their own, but then everybody, it's almost like the first day of school photos for everyone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I love this idea. I actually don't think it's too late to do this idea. I think it's super sharp. You know, people say they want to be the digital mayor. They want to be the neighborhood expert. They want to be the pulse of their community. Yeah. I love this. Great idea by Rhiannon. Brilliant idea. Uh, very human idea. And some of the ideas we share, Jimmy, are meant to get a conversion or get a lead or brag about your marketing. Some of it is just about your brand. Exactly. Like, what do you want to be known for? I, I think that's, and, I think that's probably the point that's, that's, you know, for those of, for, for the people on the call who are saying, what's the ROI, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you, it, first off, if you're asking that question right now, you don't understand marketing. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, is that you talk about brand, like this is an example of you're building an association mm -hmm. with your brand that gives people an emotion and a feeling that elicits trust and respect and mm -hmm. admiration. What's the ROI of trust? It's the difference between being in business and not, mm -hmm. right? So, so I, I, and I, listen, she probably didn't, like she wanted to create something that was of value and she didn't care about the ROI. Yeah. It was just a well, Gary Vee has the most famous line about this. What's the ROI of your mom? And so I think I think I think it's a great idea of being a local ambassador, doing the right thing, and and it's I, you know she executed it brilliantly. And I don't think this is even her idea. I think she probably just took it from somebody else because it was going around the web. But she executed it, and that's what ultimately matters. So great yeah. work here. All well, right. Well, I don't want to discount her. It may have been her idea. I know that I saw some of our other customers who saw it copy sure. it. It's incredibly difficult to find the genesis of the of the idea. This may have been it. She may have been it. Well, we'll give her credit for it. It's a great, I hope it great execution. All right, what we got next? All right, so the next one, Jimmy, and this is actually, you know, TikTok's fun and new and, you know, definitely getting a lot of buzz, but there's such a huge opportunity for agents on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, gosh, well, first of all, YouTube TV and, you know, by the way, YouTube has stories like YouTube when you do it right and when you actually play natively on YouTube, mm -hmm. it has such an upside. Yeah. And what, what we're bullish on and something that we're, you know, quite frankly, productizing and, and, and wanting to offer as a service to the industry is YouTube pre-roll ads and then retargeting the people that watch those ads. So you actually have been working on this behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, with one of our great clients, Connie Carlson, and you've, you've got an example and some data, but walk us through, you know, advanced strategy number five, YouTube pre-roll. So let's set the stage for YouTube for a moment. You know, when we talk about Snapchat and TikTok as these sort of channels that people should be thinking about in terms mm -hmm. of opportunities to spend money, collectively Snapchat and TikTok probably are about two and a half billion dollars of ad revenue per year in, in those channels respectively. Mm -hmm. YouTube, is already at 17 billion and probably going to be at 30 billion within the next three years. They're literally 10 times bigger in terms of the size of the market than these other two competitors. That means businesses are spending literally 10 times more money on this channel than they are with these other these other uh, uh, called niche networks. Uh, YouTube is YouTube advertising is exploding, not in the real estate industry, 
But in the industries right now, like e-commerce or, or SaaS, like YouTube advertising is becoming sort of the channel where you can build a brand. And the reason that it's become so successful is because they have a massive amount of inventory available, meaning mm -hmm. ad placement, and not that many advertisers mm -hmm. because the barrier to entry is significantly higher. You know, to give some context, Chris, uh, I bet you right now that like 90% or above of the top real estate teams in the country are either actively running Facebook ads or have done so recently. Mm -hmm. And I bet you less than 5% are doing YouTube. Agreed. Right? So it just there's just this big gap. So talk about like, this is an old platform. I don't know if you know this, Chris, but YouTube launched like six months after Facebook. So mm -hmm. it's like this sort of like sleeping giant. So the example that we have here is like, there's this concept in YouTube advertising called pre-roll YouTube ads. And you mm -hmm. only pay for a view if they watch more than five seconds. You all seen this when you're on YouTube, you can skip the ad. As an advertiser, I don't pay if you skip. And this is an example of an ad campaign that we ran for Connie Carlson. And you can see here, you're looking at the impressions, the views, the clicks, which we'll talk about here in a second, and the view rate. Now, what's really important to understand here, is this is a two-minute video. It's a two-minute commercial for mm -hmm. Connie and Dan, her husband. And in this two minute video, you can see that right out of the gates, right? This is sort of up to the four seconds, right right away, you can see that about 30% of people skip the ad. But if you actually look at the, the, the data here, Chris, you can see that 50% of people watched 20 seconds, 40% watched 30 seconds, 33% watched basically a minute. And if I go to the very end of the video, I can mm -hmm. see that 22% of people watched the entire two minute commercial. So mm. when you look at 6,100 views now on Facebook, that means three second views of a video. Mm -hmm. and, and that ain't going to have any impact on your brand other than the fact that it's going to sort of like look good. It's a vanity metric. It makes you feel good at night. But when you have 22% of 6,100 people watching mm -hmm. the entire video, what you're doing is you're having a high impact campaign. Now, what's crazy about this is that she's got 37 clicks. At the end of the video, it's, do you want to learn more about Connie and Dan? Click here. Mm -hmm. 37 people click through and watch that. You don't pay for those clicks. You're only paying for the views. So what, what we would recommend doing, getting started with YouTube advertising, there's two techniques you can use. First is you got to start thinking and getting serious about promoting your listings through YouTube pre-roll ads. And this is an area where like, like TikTok where you can just kind of do the basics and still win big. It's something you can use in your listing presentations that differentiate you. It's something that can help build brand awareness to sort of uh, build that association that you're the listing agent of choice. Uh, and of course, it's something that's going to help you keep your sellers happy if the home doesn't sell within seven days. You can talk about all the views you just got last week on their listing. But the second thing you should do with YouTube is for all of you who have a brand video about your culture, your company, who you are, and, and, and the best teams have this, Chris, right? It's like their agents and, and the broker, why they founded it. You should yep. retarget your website traffic with a branded YouTube ad. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in from Christmas most Instagrammable places or Jimmy's top 10 homes under this price range, you can cookie those visitors. And then the next time they log into YouTube, they're going to see, you know, the Chris and Jimmy real estate team. We're talking about when we founded the company together. And so that type of like connecting your website traffic and targeting YouTube is an advanced strategy that I want to see more successful agents and teams implement. I love it. I think it's amazing that 15 or 1600 people watch the whole video. Mm -hmm. I mean, two minutes worth of commercials. There's usually four commercials. Yeah. You know, it's usually four 30 second commercials. The other thing and kind of on a kind of on a side note or like a bonus tip is now you have the ability to run video ads on streaming services. Mm -hmm. So Sling TV, Hulu, like we're, we're starting to see that as an option too. I, it's funny, Jimmy, I actually saw a real estate agent team mm -hmm. running a Hulu ad. Really? Yes. So that was good. I was <laughs> proud of them. Yes. You know, I was kind of like, awesome. They're doing it. The problem was mm -hmm. I'm here in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. And the ad was for a team in San Francisco. So I don't know if they just hit the wrong box to target <laughs> it's, it's it locally self, it's or maybe, now. Yeah. 
maybe they know something I don't know. And people from Florida are moving to San Francisco. Yeah. But again, just the fact like this, this little thing happens in your mind where it's like, good for them. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that they're even doing it, it puts them into that category of pioneer. Yeah. I absolutely love it. All right, cool. So let's keep it rolling here. Uh, this is a strategy. So I think uh, most of our audience knows who Chris Lindell is. He's a he's a very popular um, broker. He's you know uh, known for uh, developing really effective and innovative marketing campaigns mm -hmm. amongst the real estate community. Um, talk about what is he, what is what is Chris Lindell doing to help generate seller leads for his business? Yeah. Well, I think it's Lindell. I mean, what did I, I say Lindell. 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 Sorry, Chris. How did you say it? Lindell? No, I said the second way. <laughs> Lindell? Jimmy's from Boston. So if he ever mispronounces anyone's name, we just chalk it up to the Bostonian accent. That's it. That's it. All right. So Chris, Chris Lindell. Yes. Chris Lindell. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. But Chris. Someone help us in the chat. Chris with a K. He, you're right, Jimmy. He's a very smart marketer, mm -hmm. very smart advertiser. He does traditional media, radio. He buys ads with the sports teams, mm -hmm. billboards. Yeah. He's a sharp guy. So I, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw this campaign that he was running. And it was one of the smartest ideas I had ever seen. It basically said, if you're selling your home in the next eight months, mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> like kind of a weird number, mm -hmm. then we will come out and take professional photos of it now mm -hmm. while the grass is green and while the sky is blue. He's in Minnesota, you know, to quote Game of Thrones, winter is coming, mm -hmm. right? And once winter hits, uh, the pictures are not going to be as good. And he actually, on his website, he's got a really smart page and it shows the difference. Like if you look at the top three photos, mm -hmm compared to the bottom three photos. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you kind of immediately can see why, you know what, this is kind of a good idea. This is brilliant. And so he, you know, hurry, spots are limited, but basically they offered, we will send our photographer out mm -hmm. while the grass is still green. We will take the pictures now, even if you're... It's just... Like I'm working on a web other part they pulled five nine list that this there is been there's a time seller like people are it's just give the word is this so realistic that you knew this is eight months really help what we there is this year this crit has a lot of this morning. Aaron, people that so history on the hill you can you kill right yeah have lit and you are April he having idea goes or doesn't work. And, and Chris, hang tight for just one second. We're having a little bit of an audio issue here. You want to try to disconnect, Chris, and then reconnect? Yeah, I should be back. He's back. Yeah. That, that, that was like I was in some, like, European club when they are playing, like, like a lot of bass. Um, so, 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 hit, so hit on that last point, though, because I think the audience might have missed a good chunk of that. We, we, we're, yeah. Where we ended, we were talking about – on, I'm on his website right now. I'm looking at the, the mm -hmm. free green photos, and I'm showing the before yeah. and after. But just summarize that sort of key points you were making there. Well, it's it's almost like how you know the the animals tuck away food, you know, to get through the whole winter. Yeah. He's basically setting up deals in January, February, March, April, May. Like he he's basically building his savings account 
not just his checking account. Mm. And so I just think it's really smart that like, you know, this business is very much like the month we're in, the week we're in, the yeah. quarter we're in. Yeah. And this is able to kind of tap into a little bit of a longer term mindset. Well, you, so it's smart, it's yeah. clever. Uh, and by the way, it's a, it's a seller lead generation strategy that we haven't seen. The only other point I was gonna make there, Jimmy, is this doesn't work in Florida. This doesn't work in California, yeah. but it works in the North, in the Midwest, in the Northeast, like lots of places this would work. You know, it's, I, I read a case study recently on, on uh, Tesla and they're talking about, um, talking about how, how well they manage maintaining mm -hmm. their luxury brand status, despite the fact that they're producing a lot of vehicles. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things they do is they, they do pre-inventory, right? They sell, like you can reserve a Model mm -hmm. S for a thousand bucks and knowing it's going to be delivered in six months or 12 months or 18 months. And so one of the keys to having a luxury brand is to never have more supply than there is demand. Mm -hmm. So if you have too much inventory, then you have to do things like offer discounts and deals, yep. right? So, so you have to maintain that like we're only going to produce slightly less than, than is required in the market so we can build up that excitement around it. And so I, I think this idea of like taking this concept of developing, maybe like, maybe if you had this concept like, um, you know, it, you, it, let's say you're in, and I'm just brainstorming here. So just, so, so work with me on this, Chris, but like this idea, maybe like, um, Maybe you develop a crazy innovative marketing campaign around mm -hmm. promoting a listing that you know gets results. So mm -hmm. you're in California, you're in Florida, but you know that you can only execute this campaign. Like let's say it's a TV spot. Let's say mm -hmm. it's a billboard, right? Let's say it's all the stuff we already mentioned on YouTube. You can only execute it for like maybe 10 people per month. Mm -hmm. And so, so one offer is, I see people always offer discount on their commission. What about if they use their marketing investment as a mechanism to say, you know, sign up today or reserve your spot today for the Chris and Jimmy team to, uh, you know, get our, our $2,300 uh, marketing package for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this idea of like figuring out a way to take the services you already offer, position mm -hmm. them in the context of a value add, and then say, we only have X slots available. And yeah. I, I just think there's probably something like to that idea of like figuring out ways to create scarcity and when you know you can only work with a certain amount of clients on a given month. Sure. I like that. I think fi like film, doing films and really great videos comes to mind where it's like, hey, if you like this film, we can only produce three of these per month. Mm -hmm. We've already got three for the next two months. If you're thinking about selling your home early next year and yeah. you want one of these films, you know, you can reserve your spot now. Look, like at, look at Brad McCallum. He came on the show a few months ago and he like, mm -hmm. he could definitely do that. His films yeah. are like, and maybe our team could drop a link to his YouTube channel, but he's got some absolutely unbelievable like listing videos and he could mm -hmm. like sell that as a way to build up his inventory in the future, which provides a lot of predictability. All right, Chris, well, why don't you take us to the house here? One of the things that you started the show off talking about and teasing was the fact that we know that really smart businesses look elsewhere for inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share your last tip, tip number seven on seven advanced real estate marketing ideas. I hope you guys enjoy the show today. We're going to end on a high note here, but share your last tip on how can people go out and find inspiration to find their next marketing idea? Yeah, there's a great quote from Picasso, good artists copy, great artists steal. Uh, Steve Jobs' quote on the same topic is, we have always been shameless about stealing great ideas. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, what I want you to do is I want you to start off and just go to Facebook for me. And what, like, what is one of your favorite brands, Jimmy, like a consumer brand? Like who, who do you love? Like, okay, this is going to, this is going to sound weird. Um, yeah. but like I'm, so I, I fall in love with like the leaders of companies and then I love mm -hmm. their brand afterwards. So like one brand that I'm really into right now is Glossier, the makeup okay. company. Uh, I just think they're doing some really interesting, I'm not wearing makeup today, but they're doing some really interesting things with, mm -hmm. uh, with their brand. And I just admire them. I think they, I think everyone can learn from Glossier. So what I, what I would do for this exercise is I would, I would think about 
what are the brands I admire? Mm -hmm. What are the agents I admire? What are the real estate companies I compete with? Who is my competition? What are the brokerages? Yeah. What are the tech firms like Zillow, Open Door, Compass, Keller Williams, you know, the Chris Lindahls of the world. But Jimmy, go to Facebook really quick. Mm -hmm. And this is basically kind of us leaving you guys with a place to find great ideas over and over. So pull up Glossier's Facebook page. Okay. Is it Glossier, Glossier? It, it, it's pronounced, uh, let's see if I can spell it. It is pronounced Glossier. Okay. I, I hope it's pronounced Glossier. I think it's pronounced, it's pronounced Glossier, right? Someone help me in the chat here. Okay, yeah. All You're right. asking the AV guy? He, he, he he's put his hands up and said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not know if it's brown. So, St Steve, just text me. Glossier, right? All right, so I'm on Glossier's page. Okay, and the point is you could be on any Facebook page, but scroll down a little bit, Jimmy. I'm telling you, the marketing is on point. All right, where are we going? Scroll down a little bit, yeah. and you can see they, they were just doing user-generated content. But right there on the left, see how it says page transparency? Yep. So click on see all. So you go to page transparency, see all. Yep. And then go down to the bottom. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. And what does it say right there? It says, this page is currently running ads, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you basically, you want to find that little section. Yeah. You could go to Compass's page. You could go to Corcoran Group. You could go to any brand, any company, and click on go to ad library. Mm -hmm. And what this is, is this is every ad that they are currently running. Mm -hmm. You can see all their creative, all their copy, all the different kind of formats of ads they're using. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they are all in and they're a big time Facebook advertiser. So what I would do is I would sit down with myself or sit down with the team and say, let's, let's go stalk 10 or 15 or 20 pages and let's look at the ads that they're running mm -hmm. and, and let's figure out like, what can we do to, you know, what can that inspire for us to do, mm -hmm. right? And it's a really good exercise. Like I went on the Compass page. If you go to the Compass page, what you're going to see is you're going to see that like 90% of the ads that Compass is running yeah. is to promote a listing for one of their agents. Mm -hmm. You can go to the open door page, yeah. which I think you have that one pulled up and Zillow pulled up. But th this is really like, it, it's fairly unprecedented. The reason Facebook opened up this library to the public mm -hmm. is actually because of all the trouble they got in about not being transparent enough with fake news and political ads running wild and spreading everywhere. Like even if you go to the top of the Zillow one, Jimmy, Look at the very, very top. It shows you how much they've spent on political and social issue ads. Mm -hmm. Like, so this is a section that is available on every Facebook page. If you want to see Gary V's ads, if you want to see Nike's ads, if you want to see, uh, you know, I really would focus on your competitors. I would focus on your idols, mm -hmm. so the agents you admire and look up to. If you're at a conference and you're watching a really amazing speaker, you know, Matt Beal from Hawaii Life yeah. is dropping knowledge, like go to their page, see what ads they're running. It shows the ads on Instagram, it shows the ads on mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, it shows the ads that are active, the ads that are inactive. So tip number seven is, you know, ride right on the shoulders of giants. Like what are other brands doing with their ads, because listen, you can see everybody's posts. Mm -hmm. There's no money on the line when you post. When people pay to promote an ad, there's probably a reason. They're, they want to get an ROI just like you do. So anyway, tip number seven, great artists steal. Yeah, I love it. And it's Facebook's ad library. So you can go to Facebook ad, Facebook slash ads slash library, and you can search, or you can use the technique Chris showed, which is visit their page directly, click on uh, the uh, transparency tab, and you can see any ads that they're actively running at the time. And before you wrap, Chris, one more thing just to add there, as you were mm -hmm. talking, got me thinking about this idea. What I would look to using this tool is I would look at e-commerce brands first. 
because mm -hmm. e-commerce brands, they run ads that make them money because they have to. They can track the conversion and the click and the purchase. So mm -hmm. you can sort of take like a pro tip here would be take take the inspiration for e-commerce and apply it to the service industry. I think you can find some, some inspiration there that would really actually help you stand out with your Facebook advertising. All right, Chris, take us to the house. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I think today it's appropriate to say if you need great ideas for your marketing, if you need advanced ideas, that's what we do. We build advanced funnels. We do high quality leads that are easy to convert. We work with some of the smartest and most innovative real estate teams. You can go to curator.com, click check availability to see if we're available in your market. We're exclusive by area. You can also go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts to listen to all of our past episodes subscribe on YouTube, follow us on social media. Good show, Jimmy. Thanks so much. Cheers, everybody. Water cooler out.